What's cracking, beautiful people out there? It is Friday, so we are jumping back into a 2019 fantasy football mock draft on the GOAT platform. And by that, I obviously mean draft. Draft Draft.com, the draft app, download it, go to it, type it in, hit the enter button. My name is Nicholas. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat BDGE Fantasy Football. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We do a mock draft every single Friday to hopefully help you prepare for your season that's upcoming. Now, wow, that, that filled up quickly. I start a mock draft and I invite nine of you guys to play with me. I know some of you guys want to see a 12-team leaguer. Um, I have to get on another podcast in about an hour, so going from 10 to 12 will obviously push this video a little longer, like 10 to 15 minutes, but I promise I will get some 12-teamers out there for you guys. I will get some super flex mock drafts out there for you guys eventually, Uh, but right now what I do is I invite nine of you guys on the draft app, so if you download the draft app, first of all, use promo code BDGE. You'll get $3 to draft with, then come add me, the username right here, Nick Ercolano. I'll add you back, and then I'll invite you when I do these, but you got to be quick on the trigger fingers. Oh, wow, we already started. Cool. So, The draft kicked off, and again, we are on the best ball app. I have the seven pick. I've literally gotten like the eight or nine every single time I've done a draft on here. Um, So let me break down exactly what draft is. Draft is a best ball format. A best ball format is when you only draft. You don't trade. You don't pick up waiver wire peoples throughout the season. You literally just draft, and then the software draft Automatically starts the best players at each position. There's no kicker. There's no defense. It is half point PPR, the best settings in the world. Very simple. You could do buy-ins anywhere from a dollar up to, I don't know, a thousand, two thousand, five thousand. They have their GPP uh, best ball championship, which is three million dollars in guaranteed prize pool. Very cool. Someone just took Devonta Adams at the 105, which means you probably watched my wide receiver video. I'll take Melvin Gordon at 17 all day and tomorrow. Um, I've gotten almost all of my picks at the back half of the first round. So what we've seen over and over again, I don't want to keep hounding you at this point, is Barkley, McCaffrey, Kamara, Zeke as the first four off the board. I literally haven't seen it different than that. And Adams at the 105, this is the first time I've seen that, which is interesting. Uh, I talked about this on my top 20 wide receiver rankings broken down by tiers video, which was on Wednesday. So go check that out if you missed it. Devontae Adams is a guy who I think is going to absolutely explode this year, like like smash records. We look at him last year, and he was arguably the best fantasy football wide receiver, right? Um, And all we heard from Aaron Rodgers was how much more he wanted to target Devontae Adams. He's always open. We need to get him the ball more, blah, 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 blah. He had zero touchdown catches of 40-plus yards, while the rest of his team had five. That number is going to go up. He had five catches of 40-plus yards, none of them went for touchdowns. So that's kind of unlucky in my opinion. Uh, I think that they didn't add anything to the wide receiver group. All they did was bring in Jay Sternberger, who's a rookie tight end. You can't really expect him to contribute much in the passing game. It's the only weapon they brought in. And Devontae Adams is going to be able to build on his career year. He's in his prime. He's like 26 years old. He's only going to... I think what we saw last year is his floor. I think double-digit touchdowns is his floor. And I'll say it now, and I'll, you'll probably hear me say it, 58. Wow, Marlon Mack at the 2-2. Y'all, I, I got to stop drafting with people that just watch my videos. Um, Devontae Adams... 190 targets, 130 receptions, 17 touchdowns, and about a billion yards. All right, so I'm up at the 2-4. Again, this is a 10-team league. And at this spot, Julio is my number three wide receiver. And since I was able to get Melvin Gordon, I don't normally like to start off with two wide receivers um, because one of the biggest positional advantages you could have in fantasy football is to have an elite top-tier running back. Luckily, I got that in Melvin Gordon because on a points-per-game basis, he's about as good as any single person in the NFL, right? He's about as good as any any running back. He was the running back three last year, points per game behind Todd Gurley and behind Saquon Barkley. So when he's on the field, obviously the problem is he's missed multiple games almost all the seasons in his career. Uh, I love Melvin Gordon at the 1-7. If I can get him there, boom. I like Mixon as well there. But I'm also not going to be mad about people taking Devontae Adams or DeAndre Hopkins there. Um, so we had David Johnson go off at the 1-6. And I made this bold prediction a couple weeks ago saying that by the time drafts come around in late August, David Johnson is going to be a top five overall pick consensus, right? He's going to be pushed into that top tier of running backs, which 
I don't agree with. Like, he won't be a top five pick for me, but I think that's going to be the overarching theme. We're going to hear a lot of buzz coming out of Cardinals camp um, about that offense, how many plays they're going to run, how many yards they're going to rack up, how many points they're going to score. I'm good on David Johnson at the 105. We had Kelsey go at 110, Juju at the 2-1, Marlon Mack at 2-2. That's by far and away the, the earliest I've seen him go in any of these drafts. Um, I like Marlon Mack probably as much as anyone you're going to find in the fantasy space. That's too early because he hasn't proven that he can catch passes in the NFL. James Conner at the 2-3. You know, I got a lot of heat for saying, for putting James Conner like lower in my tiers and my rankings. We just had a report come out that even James Conner just said that the touches in the Steelers' backfield are going to be distributed pretty evenly. Um, now, how much does that mean? Like, probably not much, to be honest with you. But I think that just means, like, based on the practices that they've had so far, he's clearly acknowledging that Jalen Samuels is taking a lot of snaps from the backfield. They're playing together. Um, and so it's not it's not so much that I think Jalen Samuels is going to, like, kill James Conner, but I think it's uh, as much Jalen Samuels is a really good pick as as much as I don't like James Conner too much. I think James Samuels is really going to catch like 60 passes this year, um, if not more, playing tight end, playing running back. I took Julio at the 2-4. Again, he is my third wide receiver off the board in my rankings. Um, I know they're, he's not like participating in mandatory minicamp. He won't partake in drills or whatever because of the foot. That's, you know, that's business as usual for Julio. He very rarely ever participates in this stuff. He's always dealing with a foot injury. I'm not going to look into it unless... For some reason, it ends up becoming a problem. So Julio at the 2-4. That's why I like getting the running back up there uh, rather than taking like a DeAndre Hopkins because you'll still be able to get a top-tier guy at the early second round. Dalvin Cook at the 2-5. Nick Chubb at the 2-6. George Kittle at the 2-7. Uh, where did Zach Ertz go? Did he not get picked yet? Zach Ertz is still on the board. So I've said this a million times. I'll say it every week. Like I want to escape the first three rounds with an elite tight end, one of those top three guys. But more and more, I've seen Kittle, Ertz, and Kelsey go in the second round. So I will fade them at that price. Not Kelsey, but I'll fade the rest of them at that price. Odell at the 2.8. Michael Thomas at the 2.9 is just amazing. If you can get one of those guys at the back end, like, mwah. Le'Veon, Mike Evans, Damian Williams, Antonio Brown. Todd Gurley goes at the 3.4. Todd Gurley, Todd Gurley. I think I might just end up making an entire individual video about Todd Gurley and what I would do with him because that's going to be one of the most popular topics all summer. Uh, right now, I won't use the first three-round pick on him. So we had Zach Ertz at 3-5, Mari Cooper at 3-6. Uh, no quarterbacks have been off the board yet. So for me, it's deciding between one of these running backs, one of these wide receivers. Uh, T.Y. Hilton is my favorite guy here. You know, I talked about T.Y. pretty in-depth in my wide receiver rankings video. I just, I don't think there's a point to looking much further past like him being the wide receiver one in one of the best offenses in the NFL this year. Um, and to get a little bit more deep into the platform itself, draft.com, best ball, like I said, they start the best players at each position every week for you. So you can see the starting lineup right here. You see my mouse kind of spinning around in circles like me after... 32 margaritas, one quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end. Those are your starting lineups. So you're going to end up drafting. It's 18 rounds. You're going to end up drafting. I got, I got a fan on me. It's making me cry. It's making me tear up. You're going to end up drafting like seven or eight running backs slash wide receivers. And exciting news. If you do play best ball, I have my man, Steven, who is joining the Big Dogs team as a blogger that's focusing specifically on best ball. He released his first article. Let me uh, bring it up for y'all. So we release basically all of our content in blog form as well, if you don't want to look at my face, because I probably wouldn't want to do that either. Uh, BigDogsFantasy.com. The latest article was from Mr. Steven. My computer's going to go hella slow because I got a lot of software running. So he has the best ball primer for 2019, looking at the overall strategy. So he will be releasing an article pretty much once a week about best ball and the best best ball strategy. This guy used to be a professional poker player. I trust his word. Um, he's someone that I've kept in touch with on Twitter for a long time. And eventually I was like, yo, like, you know what you're talking about. Join the team. Talk about best ball for me. All right. So we're in the fourth round. Brandon Cook just went off the board, Zam. Um... In my opinion, there's not a lot of value at running back 
in the middle rounds, but I don't necessarily love what's left at wide receiver. So I'm going to mix up the, the revenue a little bit. Do I go with, you know, I'll go with Devonte Freeman because I'm one of the biggest advocates against Devonte Freeman this year. You guys probably all know that by this point, but I do a lot of these drafts and I always want to diversify because if there's one thing you know about fantasy is that you're going to be wrong about a lot of stuff. I know that I'm going to be wrong about 40, 45, even 50% of the shit that I say throughout the summer. That being said, you have to acknowledge that and you have to draft based on that. So I'll take Devonta Freeman in a few of my leagues because if I'm wrong and somehow he has that hypothetical RB1 upside that you guys are all making up, the last time he played in a full season, he was averaging 16 and a half points per game or touches per game, guys. Um, so that 2015 season he had where he's getting like 22 touches is not a thing anymore. He doesn't get that. Plus Dirk Cutter's here now who doesn't throw the running backs. Anyways, um, when I'm right about Devonta Freeman, I'm going to be pissed that I drafted him, but I'll take him in a couple best ball drafts because um, I got two solid wide receivers, and when I get back to my pick in the fifth round, there are still going to be a ton and ton of value on the board at wide receiver. Uh, I'll get into like Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, and things like that. But yeah, uh, make sure that you are hopping onto the blog once a week because this will not be in video form, but he's putting out big facts for y'all. And I'm going to talk to my contacts, David and Nicolo. I want some I want some data. I want some information on win percentages by roster construction from last year so I can spit out more big facts to the people that are playing best ball. So with best ball, you also have to take into account that you're not choosing who starts. Only the best players start in your starting lineup. So players like Julian Edelman, in my opinion, are less valuable because they don't have those boom weeks. Um... But a player like maybe Kenny Galladay or a player like Calvin Ridley who catches deep passes, in my opinion, become a little bit more valuable. Because on the on the weeks that they don't boom, there will be three other wide receivers that can fit into your roster, right? That probably did well because you're drafting seven or eight wide receivers. Um, also, in terms of Mr. Steven, I want you to go follow him on Twitter. Let me see where he's at. Steven, you're making this hard for me. It's looking for three. We said two, bro. So, at SR Mullen 1979. Very uh, original username there, Steven. Is 1979 the year you were born? Cool. Sick. Now, go follow Steven, SR Mullen 1979, if, uh, if you're interested in learning about more best ball strategy. And the podcast I'm hopping on later... Like, literally, we just said two right there, and then he goes, still good for three. What kind of world are we living in? I'll hop it on with uh, my man Adam Pfeiffer of Roto Curve. We're going to talk about the players that we love, and I'll put that content up on my channel as well, but it's we're filming it for his podcast. Okay, so um, we had a few tight ends go off the board. We have some boomer bust players like Tyler Lockett, Sammy Watkins. Um, since I got multiple running backs, and there's just really no running back running back. Um, value here i'll usually start looking at wide receivers again and i haven't been taking a lot of chris godwin only because you usually have to grab him in like the fourth round at this point but if he drops to the late fifth or early sixth round is where i start looking at him because i still think he does have that potential right you saw what bruce arians did with the bigger slot receiver in larry fitzgerald and he rattled off like three top 10 fantasy wide receiver finishes with his time in arizona they also didn't have any he had no competition for targets there right fitz was and was the entire passing game the whole time he was there. So with Chris Godwin, it's like, yeah, you like to make the comparison and say, oh, he's going to he's gonna hop right into Larry Fitzgerald's spot or his role in the off in a Bruce Arians offense. But if Larry Fitzgerald had Mike Evans and OJ Howard on his team, I, I, I highly doubt he'd be catching 100 passes this season. So I like Godwin. I don't think that the end of the year numbers are going to be as high as most people expect them to be. Um, and I also... I'm trying to grab more wide receivers than running backs on my team because you have to start three as opposed to two each week. Um, tight end is usually a spot in, in my rankings that I want to shore up by the end of the sixth or seventh round, and that's for like season long as well. Hmm. Yeah, I've been I've been grabbing a lot of Calvin Ridley in the sixth round. Um, when I think about Calvin Ridley, I I was pit, I'm a Falcons fan, and I was pissed that we used a first round pick on a wide receiver when we took him. Someone who had a late breakout age and tested poorly uh, most for the most part athletics-wise. 
I didn't think we needed to do that. I think we needed to shore up our defense or our line or something, but it, it worked out. I can't be mad at someone who went for 832 yards, 10 touchdowns in his rookie season. And I expect him to build upon that because he was splitting snaps with Sanu for the entire year, pretty much. He wasn't even really operating as the two. Um, but when you look at Calvin Ridley in terms of what he offers fantasy-wise, it wasn't consistent, right? And we could actually go to the consistency charts that will be in my draft guide, which launches on July 1st. Go to the wide receiver consistency charts. Mr. Ridley, where are you? Calvin Ridley had nine busty games. Wow, that's really high. That's the most of any wide receiver within the top 34 rankings. Nine busty games. That is from zero to seven fantasy half PPR fantasy points. Um, so yeah, this consistency chart will be in the draft guide, which you can grab at bigdogsdraftguide.com. Um, so nine busty games. That is... Uh, it's really not what you like to see, but he had two booming games. He had one game in which he faded the public. So three games of 17 or more, but that's the thing. Like that all came in that one stretch of weeks like two through five, I think it was. Let's see. Yeah, two through two, three, and four, all above, or actually no, well, 17, 17, whatever. Um, change that to Yahoo. 37 points, 19. So he was not consistent whatsoever. But I do think that, like, with Dirk Cutter coming over, they are going to take so many deep shots this year. And Julio will get his, of course. But uh, there's no reason that Calvin Ridley can't operate as, like, the Deshaun Jackson in this offense, right? And they've used Deshaun Jackson over the last few years pretty plentiful. So, um, so like, don't be surprised if, if Ridley, you know, goes for over 1,000 yards, uh, a lot of them being deep balls. So I think he's a very good, best, an underrated best ball pick. But here's the other thing, like why I want to go with running backs early. And this is something not only in just best ball, but season long altogether. Like the running backs are so top heavy this year. And if you were to go with three running backs in your top four picks and maybe a tight end within your top six picks, you know, you, you, you escape those first six picks with only maybe one or two wide receivers, but you're still able to get DJ Moore or Tyler Boyd, Allen Robinson. Oh, Terry Hill's still there. I, could probably, I should probably grab him in the seventh. Um, we'll talk about Terry Hill for a second if he drops to me. But there's just a lot of value in the mid-rounds of picks. Um, and with Terry Kill, the criminal case was dropped. It's no longer a thing, but the NFL can absolutely still suspend him if they want to. There we go. Terry Kill was just snoiped from me. Um, Terry Kill's another guy that is interesting in the consistency charts because he finished as a number one overall wide receiver, but he had literally no games in the middle cooking, which is 12 to 17 points. He was either fading the public, five out of his 16 games, which is the highest in the NFL by two games. Um, or or he was beneath that. So, uh, damn, Hunter Henry's just sniped for me. I would have went with Hunter Henry. Uh, I will probably go with Andrew Luck or Deshaun Watson here. I, my, I've almost exclusively reserved the seventh round pick for a high-end quarterback or a high-end tight end. Um in like all of these drafts. And there it's usually just between Rodgers, Luck, and Watson, like kind of whoever falls to me. And I'll just kind of keep swapping back and forth. But I do think that uh, Hunter Henry's the last guy in this top tier of tight ends that I want to use my seventh round pick on. Like I like Jared Cook, Vance McDonald, Eric Ebron, whatever. But I think they're kind of like a tier drop off. Like you could probably get them in the eighth round, ninth round. So I'm okay with that. And I kind of like just having that top tier quarterback because when you get a top tier quarterback and this is also for you know season long like when you get the top tier quarterback you don't have to worry about the backup right because they're going to be consistent so getting an Andrew Luck means that I can grab you know Cam Newton or Dak or even like Lamar Jackson in like the 13th 14th round and only take two quarterbacks so that opens up an additional roster spot on your team for a wide receiver or running back which I think is really 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 valuable and wow, Philip Lindsay just fell to the 7-10. I've actually never seen him fall that far. Um, he's usually like a fifth round pick. But I guess, you know, when you when I when I draft with people that obviously are listening to my videos, a lot of them are skewed to the things that I say or the way I feel about players. And Lindsay's obviously a guy I'm not like dying to get on my team, but I think that uh I think that in the at the end of the seventh round, he's just too good of a player to pass. Damn. All right, so so Latavius was just absolutely sniped from me. And I think he's one. Of, I think he's going to be one of the absolute best fantasy football picks in 2018. And uh, in Monday's video, I'm going to break down Latavius Murray pretty in depth. But I love him. I absolutely love him in the eighth round. Um, I'm probably going to be looking between Geis, Rashad Penny. 
and I don't really want a tight end. So I'll go with Rashad Penny just because Geis' knee scares me. Um, with the infection and, and the rehab kind of being pushed back, um, Geis is someone that I don't think is going to get rolling until like almost halfway through the season. And, you know, I get a lot of questions about the San Francisco backfield. I get a lot of questions about it. What am I doing with them? Do I like Tevin Coleman in the eighth round, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the way I look at it is it's very likely that they end up with a top, you know, 18 running back in fantasy, or they have two top 25 running backs in fantasy. But you also have to account for the fact that you have to choose who you're going to be starting each week. And it seems like a nightmare. So when I look at it, I'm like, I don't really want to have to choose each week. And I also think Matt Breida is the most talented running back in that backfield. Um, he also happens to be the one going latest in drafts, right? Tevin Coleman has an ADP of 70, Jarek McKinnon at 107, and then Matt Breida is all the way down here at 151. So the fact that I think he's the most talented and he's going latest means that I will own almost exclusively Matt Breida in this backfield. Uh, I, I don't see myself ever using a 7th, 8th, ninth round pick on Tevin Coleman. Um, I would love Darius Geis if he fell to me all the way at the end. I think he's ridiculously talented. I just think the knee is kind of uh, scary there. So that's my thoughts on the Niners backfield. I probably won't be taking any of them in the single digit rounds. Um, if I do have one, it's going to be Brita because he's going the latest and I like him a lot. So this is also why I skipped on tight end. Uh, why I skipped on, well, actually I didn't skip on Hunter Henry. who's kind of sniped for me, but it's because Jared Cook was the next one off the board and we're two rounds later and no tight ends have moved off the board. So that's how you draft by tiers, right? In the last week or so, I've been putting out my ranking videos that are broken up by tiers. And that's why it's really important that when you draft, you don't just go off, you know, ranking like positional rankings, like you actually have tiers. And that's what I have in my draft guide as well. I have all the positions broken down by tiers to know that, okay, if I miss on Hunter Henry, there's a tier gap there. So the, the rest of the tight ends will fall to me later, right? Because they're, they're less valuable, even though they're only one ranking behind them. The tier breakup is, is massive when it comes to being able to draft correctly and like knowing value and stuff. So Darius Geis goes in the end of the eighth round. It's ridiculous. Um, Geronimo Allison, that wide receiver two role in Green Bay is extremely interesting. We're hearing tons of reports of just flooding out of there of Devonta Adams, Geronimo Allison, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. In Monday's video, we will also break down the wide receiver two role in Green Bay. So Latavius Murray, we're talking Geronimo Allison, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. I think you're going to find that video super, super, super helpful. It's actually... Um, Late round draft picks with league winning upside. So we break down about six or seven players. Um, so you guys will like that one. So stay tuned for Monday's video. Now we're seeing a little bit of a tight end run. Uh, Jared Cook is still on the board. So if he drops me here at nine, I will gladly take him because I think there's also another big drop off here after Jared Cook. Steven Njoku's situation is a little bit nerve wracking for me. There's a lot of weapons there. Um, and he can't really play on all three downs yet. He's still very young, very raw, and there's a lot of time for him to, you know, develop and get better as a player. But, you know, he might not end up being the breakout that a lot of people wanted him to be there, especially if he's a two-down player. If he can't block, then that that really hurts him a lot. So let me just make sure there's no one like crazy value. Ooh, Will Fuller's a really good pick at this point too. But I'll go with Jared Cook just because I really want to have at least like one solid tight end there. Jared Cook is probably the last tight end on the board that I'm comfortable being my starter. Love Christian Kirk, too. Great pick. Yeah, Quyman, like, keeps sniping me like he's fucking Matt Damon. ADP395. Cool uh, username, I guess. Valesk, I feel like you just added me. Like, today. You got lucky and got in. If you're following me on Twitter, I announce when I'm going in. Oh, baby, Will Fuller fall to me. Yeah, I'm concerned about the injury, but in the 10th round... Will Fuller is literally like the best, best ball target you can get. Um, and again, if you want to draft with me, guys, go to draft.com or download the draft app in the App Store, iOS, Galaxy, whatever. Add me. We'll use promo code BDGE. You will get $3 to draft with, as it says up here. Add me. I will add you back. Oh, this is a beautiful thing. This is a beautiful thing. Will Fuller, my boy. Um, Add me. I will add you back. I promise. I add everyone. If you look at my profile, you'll see. Uh, well, you'll have to go on the app. The app is clean as shite. It's so it's so clean. Super aesthetic. Um, I only I only use the desktop version. The desktop version is perfect too. But I only use that because. 
to screenshot these drafts, obviously. Yeah, so see, following followers, 247 to 244. Three people must have added me. I'm going to go in and add them now. And I open up a bunch of drafts throughout the week. So if you do, you know, deposit 10 bucks and you want to draft throughout the week, I open up like six or seven every week. I usually have like 48 drafts going at once. And the cool part about it is you can do slow drafts. You can do fast drafts. Uh, oh, Jesus. You can do slow drafts, fast drafts. So these are obviously a fast draft where it's 30 seconds per pick if you're ready to get into the action. But a lot of people work, got shit going on during the week, man. Not everyone can sit here and do this stuff. Not everyone literally just does YouTube all day. Fortunately for you guys, the very lucky people out there. But slow drafts are eight hours per pick. And they're perfect for people that are busy throughout the day, but you can open up like five of them. And then, you know, you'll usually get to pick every three, four hours or even, you know, usually sooner than that. Um, but you can choose between three man, six man, eight man, 10 man, 12 man leagues. A lot of different variety, but at the same time, super simple. Everything is the same scoring settings, the same roster settings. So you get used to how to draft and um, getting used to player values. And that's the best part about this, guys, is like, I say I call it a mock draft, but it's not really a mock draft because every draft you do in, I do think they might have a free option available, uh, which is cool. But this is actually a dollar buy-in. So you can do, like I said, anything from a dollar up to a couple thousand dollars. And what that does, obviously, is make people draft seriously. So you can't get that on other platforms. People are done by the third, fourth round. The majority of the mock draft leaves or they're, you know, they're auto drafting, taking kickers and shit. So um, this is the best thing for that. And this makes the ADPs very real because you know where people are actually going off. And I always get a couple of comments like, you know, it's best ball, so it's going to be drafted differently. It's like, yes, but the delta between like, I love using the word delta and people always say something about it, but the delta between having a paid league and where people are drafting seriously and, you know, the fall off of it being best ball and yes, there's going to be a little bit different in terms of like where players are drafted. Um, this is still so much more accurate than what you're going to get on those other platforms, if that makes sense. So looking at my team overall right now, I really like this team. Luck, Melvin Gordon, Freeman, Julio, T.Y., Godwin, Jared Cook, Calvin Ridley. Oh, man, my wide receivers are beautiful. I'll probably maybe grab one more wide receiver for now and then do late round. Like Deshaun Jackson, I think, is a phenomenal pick in, in best ball right now. I think him and Wentz are going to have ridiculously good chemistry this year. Um, let's make sure I'm not missing anyone in terms of running back value. Eh. Eh, not yet. Those guys will fall to me. I'll be all right with that. And then I have Jared Cook as my starting tight end. Andrew Luck as my starting quarterback. So, yeah, I love where, where I'm at right now with this team. Um, even like Corey Davis is someone I have no stock in. But we're at the end of the 11th round, so I'm okay with that. Normally, he's going in like the 7th, 8th, ninth round. Obviously, there's more videos like the ones I make of, you know, players to avoid. And I talk a lot about Corey Davis, so... The ADP will eventually push itself down a little bit, and uh, that's when you can start getting players at value. But we're still super early in the summer, so you can still get great value on a lot of players, um, which is why I love this platform, because they literally open up mock drafts as soon as the season ends. Like in February, I was doing mock drafts, and you could have probably have gotten like, I think Fitzgerald was probably like a 18th round pick, and you know all of these things are so skewed, so your teams in the beginning of the year can be so stacked, and you're playing for money, so you come back and win at the end of the year. And you could track it throughout the season. Like you can look at um, uh, live leagues that have you have going on. So I'll be able to come here and see what place I'm in. Can't make any moves, but you could see where you're at in terms of how much winning you have at the moment. Um, but once the season ends, you know, you just come back and the money's in your account. And then you can either take it out without a fee. It's really, it's like super simple. It goes right to your PayPal. Or you can leave it in and just continue to draft with it. So we have Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, McCole Hardman. Peyton Barber, Chris Herndon go off the board. So I have a lot of really strong wide receivers. I might just say walk in and grab Deshaun Jackson and just have the most ridiculous wide receiver group for best ball possibly of all time. Where's my team at? Yeah. So Julio, I have a lot. You know what? We got a lot of knees and ankles to worry about. That's the only thing I'll say about my team. Between Melvin Gordon, Devonta Freeman, Julio, T.Y., Chris Godwin, Ridley, Will Fuller, Corey Davis, Sean Jackson. The thing is, like, I went, I have such good wide receivers, but I, it's not like I hate my running backs either. Melvin Gordon, Devonta Freeman, Rashad Penny. So I'm, I'm really liking how this team turned out. I'd be ecstatic if this was actually like a 10 team league of mine. Um, how did you answer me?
again, yeah, that, that video, I'm not sure when I'm going to release it, but we're just literally going to talk about players that we love this year. And you guys probably hear me talk about the same. You guys by like mid-July are going to be like, Nick, you just say the same shit over and over and over again. What do you want me to like lie? That's what I do. It's like I have I have convictions about certain players and I'm not just going to start making up fake convictions just for new content. I probably will. It's fucking clickbait season, baby. Um, so yeah, wide receivers I'm, I'm sitting on for now because I just drafted like seven in a row. Running backs I'm looking at. Uh, I don't like Carlos Hyde. He's in a good situation. He's probably like a league winner if something happens to Damian Williams, but I don't. I'd rather have guys that I know are going to produce on a weekly basis. Like, I've been drafting so much Deion Lewis, man. People are sleeping on him. He's going to he's going to probably finish with around 800 to 1,000 yards on scrimmage and 55 to 60 passes. Like, that's really good production in the 13th, 14th round. I'm telling you, Deion Lewis is going to be a good thing in 2019 fantasy football. Uh, I would rather have him than Naeem Hines because Naeem Hines brings almost nothing to the ground game, whereas Lewis is an extremely elusive runner. Um, and is involved both on the on the ground and in the air. Naeem Hines is someone that he didn't really produce much when Marlon Mack was on the field. And in the playoffs game, in the two playoff games, Naeem Hines had zero targets, zero receptions in both of them. Naeem Hines is a guy I'm staying away from. I just, I don't like it. Damian Harris, though. Damian Harris, though. I'm going to grab him if he's available. I love Justice Hill as well, who I'll talk about in Monday's video. Um, so there was a video a couple weeks ago where I talked about Sony Michelle. Now, news just came out. Now, we have official word of Sony Michel and his knee. He got another knee scope. This is a problem for him dating back to college. Uh, very surprised that the Patriots took him in the first round, man, knowing that. But if something happens to Sony Michel, man. Damian Harris could, you know, anyone in that role, anyone in, in the big back role could finish with double-digit scoring weeks. And the good thing, like I said, guys, like you could shoot for a guy like Carlos Hyde. But I would rather have guys that are going to give me, in best ball, that are going to give me weekly production. Because if some of your players bust, like, or for instance, Devonta Freeman um, goes down with an injury, right? And he's out for the year or something. So I'll grab Damian Harris here. Boom. I hope I can get Damian Harris and Dion Lue back to back. Um, if, if something happens with one of my injury-prone players, right? Like Devonta Freeman, and you have Carlos Hyde back there, but nothing happens to Damian Williams, you're sitting on a zero pretty much week over week. But if you have a guy like Damian Harris um, or Deion Lewis, who's catching four or five passes a week, and Damian Harris maybe you know scores a rushing touchdown every three weeks or so, that's a that's you don't realize it. That's it's minimal, but it's a big thing over the span of 16 weeks. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I don't necessarily shoot for like high upside. Maybe in in like the guaranteed prize pool um, that they have going on. Let me go to the after. Ah, oh, damn, I got sniped with uh, D. Lou. Two back to back great picks there, Prescott and Deion Lewis. Um, when I, uh, when I make my pick, we're going to go talk about the best ball guaranteed prize pool, uh, $3 million, which is gnarly. And what my strategy would probably be different in that Jordan Reed. Yeah, I'm good. People always talk about like Jordan Reed, like, Oh, you know, if he's on the field, he's going to be top five tight end. But he, dude, he was on the field playing last year and he looked miserable. He was horrible. He's done. Jordan Reed's finished. Guys, stop, stop driving with Jordan Reed. Um, I could probably draft another tight end here. Uh, I kind of like Jack Doyle. I like Mark Andrews a lot too. But we're going to sit on that still. Because I think there are some guys I want. Uh, no, we sure already have seven. Uh, Kalen Bellage. Uh, God, he's going to get more work, but I just don't think he's a good running back. I love Justice Hill. I, I, I can't pass on Justice Hill in the 14th. Again, I'll, I'll break Justice Hill down in Monday's video. Pretty in-depth. He's one of my favorite rookie running backs. I can't believe he fell. Like how, He had monster college production. His his raw freshman year, big year, while splitting the backfield with Chris Carson. Sophomore year, 1,600 yards from scrimmage, 300 touches, uh, I think 16 total touchdowns. And then he was arguably the best tester at the NFL Combine this year. So you don't usually see a guy with heavy college production um, in a Power 5 conference and test really well at the Combine and then fall into the fourth round. So I thought the Ravens got to steal with him, and I love the position that he's in. So let's go to... The three and a half million dollar best ball championship GPP. Now, like obviously, when you're playing in a GPP, um, you know you want to finish among the very, very high percentage percentile of players, right? You want to be like top fifty to win that hundred thousand dollar prize or whatever. So, in a league like that, I wouldn't be taking guys like Deion Lewis, or I wouldn't be taking a Damian Harris. Maybe there, I would be taking a. Um, maybe there, I would be taking guys like Carlos Hyde, right? Because you want to swing for upside. So. The way I think about it is this, like uh, people talk about handcuffs or people ask about handcuffs. 
if you're taking your own handcuff, you're playing for safety, which I'm okay with in seasonal leagues. Um, I, I don't I don't recommend drafting handcuffs because no one's going to hold on to them for the first two to three weeks. They're going to get onto the waiver wire and then you'll you'll be able to pick them up rather than wasting a draft spot when you can draft someone with like high upside or whatever. Um, if you're drafting someone else's handcuff, then you're playing for upside. Then you're doubling down because if that guy gets hurt, then not only do you have your your own starting RB ones right that you would originally drafted, but now you have their RB ones. But again, if you draft your own handcuff, then you're playing for safety in case in case your guy gets hurt. So if you're in like the, that three and a half million dollar GPP, you want to play for upside. You're not playing for safety. You don't care about a floor, right? You want you want the highest amount of points possible. So if you're drafting one of those, and that's a twenty five dollar buy in, I believe, and I'll do a couple of those probably closer to the end of the summer. Um, that'll be fun. So you guys can watch me do that. Right now, I only have like ten dollars in my account, so I'm broke, bitch. Uh, and uh, I, I don't have I don't want to drop twenty five dollars on that. So. You could still get as much value from me talking about this nonsense. We are in the 15th round. This is an 18 round draft. Man, these are so fun. These are so addicting. I, I'm checking them like I always, fuck, I get really busy during the day. Look how many drafts I got going right now. I don't even know if you could see that, but there's like 13. Um, and normally I have more than that, but I always time out because I'm so busy during the day. Just like <laughs> creating content, bro. Um, okay. Okay, buckle down, Nick. Looking at tight ends, where are we at? I like the tight ends on the board. Still so much value at quarterback. Eh, actually, there's not that much value at quarterback. But I took Andrew Luck, so I don't really have to pair him with anyone. Um, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is like a floor, a safe floor guy. I don't really love the ceiling there because they're going to be run heavy. Same thing with Tom Brady. Jimmy G is a guy I don't really have much of. I don't really love him in season long, but around quarterback 20, I'm cool with that. And now I have Jimmy G, I have Andrew Luck, and I'll probably... Let the quarterback position ride itself out there. I'll draft one more tight end. I might draft two tight ends only because I didn't get like one of those top six guys. Had I got Hunter Henry instead of Jared Cook, maybe I'd go Hunter Henry and Mark Andrews or Hunter Henry and Ricky Seals Jones. Low key, low key, Ricky Seals Jones in for a bounce bike. Don't be surprised. You heard it here first and second and third. Um, but since I'm going to have Jared Cook and I'm going to pair him with like Jack Doyle or some shit. I might want to grab a third tight end and then roll with either five running backs or just seven wide receivers. We have three picks left, so I can I can go one more at each position maybe. I kind of like Jack Doyle because we have Ebron coming off the groin surgery. Jack Doyle's uh, apparently reports saying he's running full sprints at, at practice, so he should be full strength, you know, end of June, maybe early July. So liking what we're hearing there. Oh, Brito is still on the board in the 16th, huh? Great pick there by ADP. Jack Doyle just got fucking sniped again. God damn it. I hate everybody. Ugh, I don't like... I will not be drafting any of these older guys. Like, I would I would put it like a 75% chance Walker, Greg Olson, and Eifert all get hurt this year. Um, so I'm going to sit on tight end right now because I could wait until Ricky Seals-Jones falls to me later. Running backs, Stephen Singletary. Dude, I've been grabbing so much Mike Davis. Like, an absurd amount of Mike Davis. I also like Geo, and I like... Uh, I'll go with Mike Davis here. I think Mike Davis is just another guy that's just hashtag good at football. Like, he's a guy that can play all three downs. I love Montgomery. Montgomery is the guy there, and I'm, I'm really high on him. And I'm loving these reports that are coming out, like them praising him for pass catching and stuff, because that's what I think is going to separate him. Jordan Howard was really good last year. Or I mean, the last couple of years in fantasy, right, for what you'd expect to have been. But that was, like, while he doesn't catch passes. And he's still, like, a top 20 fantasy running back. So Mike Davis and David Montgomery are both Jordan Howard upgrade pass catching ability um i still think mike davis is probably going to run in like three or four touchdowns this year and if something happens in montgomery i think he takes over as like an 18 touch guy that catches three to four passes a game so i really like him in the 16th round i've been grabbing a lot of him this late rather than you know taking high upside guys i hear a lot about adrian peterson like there's no shot i'm touching adrian peterson this year like he was he was outside of a few big games last year how he started off he was miserable down the stretch he was done um, Darius Geis, while he might not be full strength in the beginning of the year, is still going to eat into that backfield for the most part. He's going to get the majority of carries there, and then Chris Thompson is going to get a lot of touches, so I'm good there. Um, so we have six running backs, and unless, like, I kind of want some shares of Devin Singletary. I like Robert Foster as a, as a wide receiver in best ball a lot. Um, but in terms of strategy, guys, too, best ball, make sure you're following my man Stephen Mullen on Twitter, and you're checking back on the blogs each week, because I think He's going he's gonna to release a, an article each week that are all different strategies and all different um, 
things that he's experienced in best ball, and they're going to help you become a better player. Like me just reading his stuff makes me become a better player because I don't have all the data on best ball. It's very new. It's not mainstream yet. So it's not like I can, you know, give you a lot of big facts about it. It kind of just goes by my feel. And it's more so just to prep you for where certain players are getting drafted in leagues. So you have a better idea of like where you need to target these guys. So if you want to start practicing again, man, just add me, Nick or Colano, use promo code BDGE. You'll get trade dollars to draft with and life will be good it was raining out this morning but now it's sunny and life is good again man it's been beautiful these last few weeks in brooklyn love my neighborhood i played kickball last night fucking pull this shit out of my groin Ugh. robert come to papi robert foster was one of literally the best fantasy wide receivers down the stretch last year like, he went over 100 yards in three of the last five games. One of them went, like, 95 yards. Let me pull him up. Pull him in his Um And he was kind of he, – he came from Alabama, right? And he was sitting underneath, like, a lot of competition there. And I don't think we got to see him – did we get to see him test the combine? He might have been, like – hurt or I remember there's like a weird situation with Foster and there's a reason why he was so low and like no one really knew about him there was some stuff going on in the background or he did test he actually tested pretty damn well um he just didn't produce at the college level which is obviously like a a uh, a concern but when we've seen him do it at the NFL level then you know I feel like the concerns can kind of be wiped away but you look at Foster man like look at down the stretch week 10 three for 105 the next week, two for 94 and a touchdown. Then he had one dud week, and then he goes seven for 104, four for 108 and a touchdown, four for 52, four for 21 and a touchdown. Like, he was really, really good down the stretch. And going back to the consistency charts, where is Fasta? Oh, no. Well, there's the consistency charts. Um, it's not what I wanted to do, market share. So this is another cool little feature of the draft guide, a tool that, oh, man, I'm about to get murdered. I just took John Brown for no reason. So I just... Oh, no. God damn it. They took Laney Walker, you son of a mother. Um, so this is another chart that's going to be in the Big Dogs Draft Guide, the market share, the big facts of everything market share. Snap percentage market share, target market share, reception market share, 40-plus yard reception market share, yards, 100-plus yard receiving games. So... This is pretty gnarly. There were about, what, seven players that had a 100% market share of their team's 100 plus yard games. Robert Foster was one of them. He did it four separate times, or was it three? Who had four? Jarvis Landry did it four times. He was the only one on Cleveland that went over 100 yards receiving in a game. Robert Foster was the only one on Buffalo. He did it three times. Robert Foster was like sneaky so good last year. and I kind of like him at the end of the best ball dress. I know they added John Brown, but like, how are you not going to have Robert Foster and John Brown as the one and twos outside with Josh Allen, who threw the ball deep on 19.2% of his throws last year? How fucked up am I that I know that off the top of my head? That led the league. Um, and that's usually the case with, you know, run, uh, rookie quarterbacks. They get a little antsy under pressure or in the pocket and they start chucking the ball deep, make bad decisions. But that's who Josh Allen is. He has that big arm. He throws it deep. Great compliment for John Brown, Robert Foster. So I like switching up between John Brown, Robert Foster, grabbing them in the 17th, 18th. I think they'll have plenty of big games down the stretch too. Um, so there, yeah, so I have my team basically. Let's see the the final roster. Final roster, I went with two quarterbacks, two tight ends, six running backs, eight wide receivers. This team might absolutely go down the shitter because I only have two tight ends and one of them is Delaney Walker. Like it wouldn't be surprising. It wouldn't surprise me if Delaney Walker ended up starting the year on the pup. Um, So please don't buy into the fact that every time someone says, oh, they'll be ready for this or that, like, don't buy into that storyline, please. Oh, he'll be full goal by OTAs. Like, I want to see you running for three or four straight days before I know that you're actually good. But this is the final roster. Uh, I like it. I mean, we're we're probably a little shallow at running back. Melvin Gordon, Devonta Freeman, Rashad Penny, Damian Harris, Justice Hill. I think there's a lot of upside there. Um, And if Devonta Freeman actually stays healthy, which I... I would be surprised if he did. Uh, then the team's going to be looking really good because my wide receivers are so damn strong. Then we have Andrew Luck and Jimmy G at quarterback. So I actually really like how this team turned out outside of the tight end debacle at the end there. Um, I guess it kind of worked out, though, because I was about to take John Brown, not realizing it. it was my last pick, and they took a second tight end for me. So I actually would have went into the season with 
two tight ends. Um, and the other thing too, is you got to be weary of the bye weeks. I don't think they were up here or I just have a really hard time paying attention to them. So if you're drafting two quarterbacks or just two tight ends, make sure you don't draft ones that have the same bye week. Like for all I know, Andrew Luck and Jimmy G have the same bye week or Delaney Walker and Jared Cook have the same bye week. And I just screwed myself out of 20 or something points for that week. That's what you don't want to do. So you come here to learn all the shit that I do wrong so that you don't do it wrong. So that's going to uh, wrap up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it valuable. Um, let me know like what you want to hear me talk about throughout these mock draft videos. Is it more roster construction? Is it more just like individual player analysis? Is it more looking at other player or, or other drafters' teams and you know fucking roasting them? Is that what you want to see? Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure you check out draft.com. Again, use promo code BDGE. You'll get three dollars to draft with. Check out the draft guide, bigdogsdraftguide.com. The first issue releases July 1st. It will be updated throughout the entire summer. It's got all those tools in there as well as, you know, top sleepers, busts, all the rankings and tiers and things like that. Um, oh, Curtis Hart, my man, just made a purchase. Thank you for purchasing the draft guide, sir. And that's really it. So thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, drop a comment, and I'll see y'all on, well, every, uh, tomorrow has live stream, Patreon, Patreon live stream. If any of you guys are on my Patreons, patreon.com slash BDGE. I do a private live stream every other Saturday for y'all. So that will be Saturday. Um, and I'll probably release it afterwards on Saturday. But I'll see y'all on Monday's video. And then back for another mock draft next Friday. Goodbye.